good afternoon everyone um, all the audience who've joined us for today's session uh, from SDG to enterprise and the sanitation value chain a journey to scale um, as most of you would have also attended uh, today's wash plenary which was a fireside chat uh, between honorable minister Sri, Sri Hardeep Singh Puri and uh, Ms. Nainaval Kidbai which really set the tone for today's session and one of the key messages that honorable minister highlighted was obviously the role of private sector that can uh, that can help in bridging the demand supply gap in wash sector um, in terms of ensuring the last mile delivery and uh, goods and services uh, when it comes to wash and sanitation value chain these private sectors can range from large size players to small enterprises and even the community led groups and SHG. It has been observed that these groups have really emerged as one of the key actors in addressing the last mile delivery. And while there has been common schemes like nat uh, National Urban Livelihood Missions and Rural Livelihood Missions, which focuses on creating more such groups uh, for livelihood generation activity. And government has also looked at a lot of conversions uh, with, especially with uh, Swachh Bharat uh, to enhance this. However, we still see that not many of these groups have been able to reach scale. Uh, through today's session, we would like to bring the focus on the challenges, both technical and non-technical, which are faced by these community-led groups uh, and SHGs, and deliberate on key areas of interventions that can enable them to scale up to enterprises. The session has been curated in collaboration with NFSSM Alliance and IntelliCAP's Better Sanitation Collective. I would like to quickly take you through the session structure. The session is divided into two parts where in the first part, we would start with short show showcases of stories from various SHGs and organizations who have been working with them. Each showcase would be around five to six minutes, post which we have a great lineup of speakers for exciting panel discussion, which will be around 35 to 40 minutes. The discussion will be followed by a quick Q&A, which will be for 10 to 15 minutes, depending on time. Uh, however, I encourage all of you to keep posting your questions, thoughts, and observation into the chat box. Before we start the session, it's my privilege and honor to also have Sri G. Mati Vatanan, sir, Principal Secretary, Department of Housing and Urban Department, Government of Orissa, as a keynote speaker for the session. Sir has been leading implementation of several critical urban development initiatives by Government of Orissa. A 1994 batch IS officer, his wide range experience includes servicing as CMD of IPCOL, Chairman of Orissa Power Generation Corporation, Chairman of Orissa Hydropower Corporation, Secretary of Commerce and Transport Department, as well as Energy Department. Hailed as an entrepreneurial administrator, the state has witnessed a transformation in various spheres under his leadership. From a complete overhaul of the solid and waste water management systems to bringing 100% coverage of pipe water supply and street lighting, as well as digitization of various citizen services, his swift decision-making and action orientation has transformed standard of living for all urban citizens statewide. His work in urban water sphere to achieve 100% pipe water supply as well as decentralized wastewater management has been showcased at annual conference of International Water Association held in Colombo. And he's also uh, uh, been one of the water, recognized as one of the water uh, leaders among 400 across the globe by Water Aid UK. So it's a pleasure to have you uh, with us as a keynote speaker. And I would now welcome you to address the audience. Thank you so much for a very liberal introduction, madam. Happy to, happy to present the uh, uh, Odisha story of engaging the women self-help groups in the war sector. Is the presentation visible? Yes, it is, sir. One of the highlights of our uh, uh, experience, our engagement is that the, uh, we engage the self-help groups in a deeper, in a participatory uh, mode. We have a partnership with these self-help groups. That partnership arrangement has made the women, the, our engagement as a unique and special, making Odisha as a special model. Uh, we engage them in a variety of activities, not only in the wash, water, sanitation, hygiene sector, also in other initiatives uh, taken up by the urban local bodies in the urban governance sector. With the increasing focus on the wash and, uh, and the kind of positive health and environment outcomes we get, the need for 
more resources at the decentralized level at the urban local bodies has been increasing, especially for us in the last few years. But a major challenge has been to how do we source them, source the skilled workforce in the decentralized manner, in the corporation areas, in the municipalities, in the small towns. Not only uh, to engage them to provide the services, but also to manage these facilities and to support the state in providing a sustainable sanitation solution. The answer has been Mission Sakti. Mission Sakti is the organization of uh, women self-help groups in the state working for the women sector, uh, women self-help groups uh, in the past 20 years. They represent a strong, trusted, empowered, and committed workforce. There are uh, more than 6 lakh women self-help groups in the entire state of Odisha functional under the Mission Sakti, out of which more than 35,000 dynamic groups are in the urban areas alone, in the 114 urban local bodies. They provide a potential community-based human resource for us to leverage in the WASH and other uh, urban initiatives we take up. The, as I said, the Odisha model has been a deeper level of engagement, partnership, taking the SSG Women Empowerment to a higher orbit. Our engagement uh, has been uh, high-end in the value chains, involving financial, technical, as well as managerial skills. We moved them from the tradi traditional unskilled, semi-skilled economic income generating activities like stitching, tailoring, snacks making to uh, managing the uh, value chain involving the sanitation, water, and other sectors completely end-to-end -end management. Some of the key enabling decisions taken by the government in the last few years, which has strengthened the uh, SSG involvement partnership in the urban governance, has been that the mode has been partnership not, uh, in the delivery of the water sanitation, liquid as well as solid waste management, subsidized food program. We have a program called OHAR. And other municipal functions like property tax, parking area management, all those things. We have been focusing on the capacity building of the self-help groups, generic as well as the task specific, including the soft skills required to take up these activities. Uh, we have also invested sufficiently in developing the business models in all these activities, coming out with the clear-cut SOPs, guidelines, protocols, standardizations, model contracts to govern the activities to engage the self-help groups. And making self-help group as our partner has been a non-negotiable thing for us, for the government, for the urban local bodies. And the primary role for the self-help groups in the entire engagement. The, the community engagement through the self-help group has, is not only a, a, a means, but also an end in itself, in our view. And it's not only a process, but the very purpose of urban governance through the fourth tier of the, uh, 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 which we call as the community-based institutions. And the focus is not, not only on the financial benefits, monetary benefits for the self-help group, but uh, overall growth in enhancing the professional competencies of the self-help groups, leading to a kind of sense of pride, accomplishment, and dignity in the jobs they take up. And we have also uh, you know, uh, focused on sensitizing and orienting various government functionaries, like the urban local body functionaries, officials, officers at various levels, to partner and work with the self-help groups, changing the mindset and bringing about that behavioral changes within the functionaries has also been a focus for us. That also includes the partners. Not only the government functionaries have been oriented, also the partners. For example, we run the AHAR program. It's an affordable uh, feeding program where the, uh, the, we have a very strong partnership with uh, Manna Trust, we have a very strong partnership with the Akshay Patra Foundation. So, uh, so when we work with them, we also insist that they also should work with the self-help groups. Let them take up the activities, back-end activities, but the front-end activity, our center management, has to be given to the women self-help groups so that the women, the women serve the food to the public. So the making the partners also to partner with the self-help group has been our focus, and we have been very successful in that. And the, to cite few of the activities, fecal search management is one of the primary activities where we have started engaging the self-help groups, we are back four years ago. And uh, uh, starting from the 
public operation and maintenance of the public toilets. We have also entrusted the construction of the public toilets, community toilets, by these women self-help groups, so that they will have more in, more involvement in that, and that will also ensure the involvement of community in the uh, subsequently after construction. The community has to use it, so that would bring in a lot of involvement of the community. So right from beginning construction, from the construction point itself, we engage the women self-help groups. And uh, many of our community and public toilets are today constructed, operated, and maintained by the women self-help groups. We also have given the responsibility of managing the cesspool vehicles, cesspool MTR vehicles. And uh, they all, we also engage them in the IEC data collection activities in the uh, 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 related to the insanitary toilets, desludging practices, mechanized desludging, manual presence of manual cleaning, manual scavenging to play a vigilant role, a role in that. These are some of the activities in the fecal uh, uh, sludge management. And uh, operation and management of eight uh, septage treatment plants have been completely end-to-end -end, have been handed over to the women self-help groups. And these groups earn about roughly about 1.2 lakh per month in the wind up. And for the first time in the country, the women and the transgender self-help groups have been, uh, uh, or have been trans. So uh, they, they have, we have transferred the resp entire responsibility to them and they are successfully managing the septage treatment plants. And uh, they also have been, in some places, they have also been given land for raising nursery and which will increase their income to, uh, uh, to enhance their income level. And another area where we have successfully engaged is the uh, municipal solid waste management. Odisha is implementing a decentralized community-based uh, solid waste management system and the Swachya Satis, who are the members of the women self-help groups from the mission safety, uh, they act as the Swachya Sati, they act as the, they, they, they anchor the entire program. So this, this decentralized model is, relies on the foundation of a, uh, a household segregation. That's the, that's the basic fundamental uh, uh, component of this model. And the Swachya Satis act as change agents to bring about the behavioral changes at the household level to ensure 100% segregation of wet and dry waste. They ensure collection of segregated waste, transportation in the battery operated vehicle. In fact, most of our drivers are the women self-help group members or transgender members, and they take it to the decentralized compost place called MCC Micro Composting Center, where it is composted and the dry is segregated and sold to the recycling agencies. So the complete management of the micro-composting center and the material recovery facilities, which play a major role in the municipal solid management, is in the hands of the women self-help groups. They also take up the responsibility of the sale of the organic manure, which is produced in the micro-composting centers. About 11,660 members would be eventually engaged in all these centers. Presently, we have about 2,500 Swachya Sati is about 600 supervisors managing the entire value chain, and they are paid month, the performance-linked uh, monthly incentive, about 4,000 rupees for the Swachya Sati, 8,000 for the supervisor, 10,000 for the battery-operated vehicle driver, 12,000 for the people who, engage, who, are, who work in the MCCs and uh, MRFs. You can see the photographs. And uh, uh, eventually, I said, as I said, 11,660 self-help group members will be working in all these things. And then that would result in employment generation of about 42.5 lakh human days. Now we have stopped saying man days or person days. It is not neutral, gender neutral. It is specific, exclusive for women. Only women would be employed. And uh, are about 145 crore annually would be the wage component that, go, that flows into the women self-help groups. And uh, another important area where we engage the self-help groups is the our Drink, urban drinking water sector, drink for, we implement drink from tap to provide 24 by 7 uh, uh, water with drinkable, uh, uh, you know, drink from tap quality available in the urban areas. I'm happy to say that Bhuneshwar is the first million plus city in the entire country to achieve 100% water supply, uh, universal coverage of pipe water supply with 100% house connections. In, in addition to Bhuneshwar, we have achieved this in another eight urban local bodies so far, and we have a plan of saturating the entire state, all 114 urban local bodies, achieving universal coverage with household connection, including the slum areas by March 2022. We are uh, uh, fast moving towards that. And in this drinking water program, we have engaged the women self-help groups in an extensive manner. 
they are engaged to take the monthly meter readings and raise the online user charges bill collecting the payments digitally and they are, they also take up you know field water quality testing at the consumer end conveying the quality results to the to the to the phoa agencies and they also act as a, a key community link between the public and the water supply authorities and they help us in achieving the 100% house connections facilitate the consumer uh, redress the complaint redressal at the community level at the field level and they are they are provided with performance linked incentive which ranges from minimum 4000 to 25000 rupees per month based on the performance and uh, the uh, we would be engaging about 5000 jalsathis to cover almost about 12 lakh household connections covering the entire 7 million urban population across 114 urban local bodies they would be earning about 10 crore incentive per annum cumulatively and as i said that we also uh, run a program subsidized meal meal program and it's a partnership program with the ngos and now uh, 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 very recently the all the ahar centers the the, uh, the outlets we have for the for managing the outlets we have engaged the women self help groups more than 150 women self help groups have been engaged in this it's a program where hard cooked meals is provided every day for the poor and needy at 5 rupees it's boy it's a steamed rice and uh, uh, dal cooked dal and we serve about 1 lakh meals every day so far this program has served more than 10 crore meals and cleanliness hygiene and service with the dignity are the hallmarks of this program and uh, all our ahar centers inclu including the ahar kitchens are iso certified we are proud to say that and uh, now uh, uh, all the centers are managed by our women self help groups they serve the people with you know compassion and dignity another areas area area where we have extensively partnered with women self help group is during the covid pandemic as covid warriors to fight the pandemic in the war front and they managed our temporary medical centers quarantine centers covid care home covid care centers they provided cooked food for the uh, 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 patients and for the people who are who were kept in isolation they have taken care of the facility management they provided the dry ration and other requirements for the homes under isolation they have taken up extensive iec activities on the safety protocols and do's and don'ts uh, related to the covid pandemic we have we have engaged them in the intensive survey of the symptomatic uh, patients uh, at the household level identifying cases and they have also engaged in preparing ma mask and sanitizers in a massive scale and another initiative especially during the covid pandemic where we engaged women self help group is the is our urban wage employment initiative taken up in the urban areas as a, uh, a response to the covid pandemic when there has been a lockdown for a very prolonged period when the economic activities were down and people could not find the the unorganized laborers could not find job opportunities we took up this scheme implemented by the state with the 200 crore budget outlay where this 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 scheme is implemented in partnership with the women self help group and the slum dweller association these are the community based institutions and the self help groups acted as a executing agencies implementing agencies for value of work up to 2 lakhs the work order has been given to them as a kind of petty small time contractor and if the value of work is more then the self help groups are engaged as uh, uh, implementing partners to exercise supervisory responsibilities and they are paid 7.5% of the value of the project as the incentive for taking up the supervisory responsibilities and they identified the projects they engaged the unorganized workers laborers migrant laborers in these activities and uh, they assisted the urban local bodies and the government in executing such works about 6931 self help groups have been engaged and under this program to le leveraging the funds under this program we are also constructing about 1000 mission shakti grahas which are nothing but the you know the the activity center for the women self help groups as part of their capacity building exercises exercise and the if you see the impact of the partnership and the, this engagement has enhanced the community partnership in the community ownership and community partnership in the programs it resulted in dignity pride and accomplishment for the self help groups in the activities which they have uh, taken up 
the increase in the income, pride in their activities. This resulted in inclusive and progressive uh, involvement in the in achieving a sustainable sanitation solution. The way for, as a way forward, so our uh, we are we are into saturating this model in the entire state in all the activities. So simply to say, to monopolize all the community-centric activities and services in the urban local bodies with the self-help groups, transgender as well as the women groups has been our motive and we have been very, very successful and our experience has been very encouraging. With this, I, I come to the conclusion and I thank the organizers for giving us the opportunity to present Odisha's model, which has been very enriching. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for uh, uh, sharing uh, uh, Odisha's work. Odisha has uh, anyways been the forerunner uh, in uh, all the work they're doing in water sanitation and also the other areas. Um, in fact, to start with, we also have a short video, uh, which is uh, uh, by the self-help groups, uh, narrating the stories of the self-help group who are operating the FSTP. So I would also want to uh, uh, share that uh, video with everyone uh, so that people can actually see the work uh, uh, you and your team and have done with the SHG groups in Odessa. So I'll just uh, share that, uh, share my screen and share the video with uh, with the work Orissa government has done. Um. The state of Odisha has taken pioneering steps towards empowering vulnerable groups by involving self-help groups in community-managed sanitation. We are Mograta CLB members. We have 63 Fecal sludge and septic management has traditionally been dominated by men. But sanitation managed by women and transgender self-help groups results in community ownership and a more sustainable model in the long run. In this area, we have allowed the women uh, uh, self-help groups to come in a big way. All the value chain of the waste management is now the domain of women in the state of Odisha. Under the National Urban Livelihood Mission, the urban poor are federated into women self-help groups, area-level federations and city-level federations to improve their livelihoods. This mission has been converged to provide the same groups a means of livelihood across the FSSM value chain. Odisha is a pioneer in the work which we are doing with SSG, so we thought why not empower the group and make them the beacon for the whole change. At the time of containment, what we have done is they have actually constructed toilets and now they are managing those toilets. Second, during emptying and transportation, what we have done is that they are getting money for every refluent for uh, septic tank cleaning. And last which we are very proud of is that we have gone and we have started training the city level federation of SAGs in management of the septic treatment plants. हम लोग दो महीने पहले यहाँ पर training पर आ रहे थे. दो महीने से लेकर operation संभाल रहे हैं. इसे जो नया आता है हम लोग उसके बारे में उसको सिखा देंगे यहाँ का. वो कामों में धुन ठीक भाव रे कोरी पर उच्च एवं हमें ये plant चढ़े आपने संपूर्ण भाव रे उपजुक्त है इस रिच. पहले तो सेस्पोल भेन आता है बस लॉज लेके वहाँ से हम गेट के पास उसका फॉर्म भरते हैं रजिस्टर मेंटेन करते हैं पहले में गाड़ियाँ से अनलोडिंग प्राप्त होने में छिड़ा हुए तापर रिसीविंग चंबोरे स्लॉस सबों को ढाला जाए तब रिसीविंग चंबोरों सेटलर कॉम ठीक एनिंग टैंक को जाए सात दिन तक वो सेटल हो जाए तो उसको हम पंप के थ्रो स्लॉस ड्राइंग बेड में डालते हैं स्लॉस सबों सुखी गोला पड़े स्लॉस स्टोरेज सेट को जाइके स्टोरेज होइके रुके 
women and transgender self-help groups have mastered the skills for septage treatment facilities, a task earlier managed by engineers. Seeing this interest and the success of the women involved in sanitation activities, we took it up. And in fact, now they have been developed as master trainers for other women SAGs who has been or shall be deployed in the uh, SETP plants across the state. Self-help groups are also being engaged in Odisha's efforts to sensitize the community. Women SAGs have played a role in creating the awareness. IEC campaign have been done by them. They are right now touching in the name of such as such Satis. They are going to each and every household and giving the message about uh, regular desludging, proper septic tank. Our sadhya samay samasthe missi ki ghara ghara jai ki tanko bujhi jo fast pachar jo tamara pipe na kebe sapai thala. Je apna drain ko jo pipe na tanki ro jo pipe chhodu chundi apna usi ta chhadi veni. Sitti pay sex pool gadi thora ki bhabari kimti sapai. ଅପରେଟ So that's a model I, I I believe other states can adopt very easily. This is a model of community managed inclusive sanitation that also promotes livelihoods for the rest of the country to follow. Um this is such an inspiring and uh, you know video which we saw and the work done uh, under matisa's leadership uh, which orissa has taken uh, matisa one question which i would want to ask that you know since orissa has done so much of work uh, what do you think other states can uh, you know leverage and learn from the work which orissa has already uh, you know already undertaken so um, if you could give key pointers or some areas which definitely other states can replicate and use it in their models uh, which are the success elements which you would want to suggest thank you for the question the uh, the one of the key the, one of the key uh, things which i i would attribute to the success is that we have kept the technology at a low level the waste the wastewater management doesn't need a very high end technology is a biological degradation process so if you keep the technology low it is it's, it becomes more sustainable and now the our model is that it's of low technology and with with the least number of machineries with the least consumption of electricity so and in a decentralized manner smaller manner low capacity so so you will be able to see not only that you have large metros you also have large number of in fact 90% of our uh, uh, cities are medium or small towns only 10% are very big towns so for the medium and the small towns this is the most appropriate solution doesn't require high technology so the the, the moment you go for a low technology it is easy to you know make partnership with these kind of women self help groups with a little training and hand holding they would do a wonderful job and when it is a community based institution the acceptability of the community is very very high so that's the model we are adopting not only in the liquid waste management also in the solid waste management we are putting up we are putting up almost about 245 uh, micro composting centers in the entire state all are in the limits of the community it is not on the outskirt so no longer we do the dumping on the outskirt of the city the solid waste dumping the solid waste so in a in a, in a smaller cluster basis we put up this Uh, micro composting centers and material recovery facility 
and we and we engage the women self help groups not only to get this waste segregated at the household level transported also processed at these decentralized facilities and they do the end to end management we need to understand their strength as accordingly we can leverage their strength ultimately the waste management is the community's responsibility we only facilitate it so partner them along with you as as an active partner in the entire process you will find the success thank you sir um uh, with this uh, we would also want to move to uh, other stories um, there are other shg stories and organizations who've been working with uh, shg groups and we would want to share uh, them to uh, you know share their views uh, so uh, i have uh, ms nalini shekhar who's co-founder of hasrudullah uh, with us and um, hasrudullah is a social impact organization that works with waste pickers uh, located in bangalore uh um, uh ms nalini's passion is to restore uh, the dignity of workers in the unorganized waste sector and improve their access to predictable livelihood and social security for their families uh she trained several hundred waste pickers about new ways of solid waste management and helped develop their skills to become waste management professionals and make them micro enterprise so um i would request her to uh, you know share her experience of working uh, with the uh, enterprises and what in her views could be you know i mean in her experience are the key elements which are required for these shgs to really scale up to enterprises ma'am while you uh, you know you start your uh, uh, talk i'll pull up the presentation which you just uh, shared with us so sure. you can hear me now yes so i'm uh, just sharing the journey of um, you know moving waste pickers on the street with a bag bending thousand times carrying uh, you know um anywhere between 50 and 60 kilos um for about 4 to 5 ki kilometers to become micro entrepreneurs and it was very inspiring to listen to what orissa is doing and um, and uh, there's a huge support from the government to make this happen so when that happens our uh, work will become very e very very easy and uh, it was uh, um in 2010 we very uh, started as a very pilot and we went to the government and we went to the courts and said you know you have to recognize waste pickers they are doing so much work and how much of um, you know uh, in return without any investment from the government they are also uh, managing to save money for the government almost 84 crores of rupees in just collection and transportation as the uh, sir was talking about decentralization is the key and uh, bangalore had already gone into centralized solution for many many decades so breaking that and making into a simple decentralized uh, intense uh, waste picker integration was a huge challenge at that time we wanted to scale up quickly so we decided to do uh, my uh, you know micro enterprises so our story in bangalore is just not hasudala story it is a story of the of the city the city government really believed in the skills and knowledge of the waste pickers and that is what is the key as the uh, the uh, odisha group has done they believed in women they believed in the sg group they said there is skill and exactly like that in our in our uh, bangalore people believed in the skills and knowledge of waste pickers lot of people didn't even know what we i am talking about 2010 uh, i started working with waste pickers in pune in 1993 where there was no solid waste management rules in those days 20000 household people used to give segregated waste so um, a, a mega city like bangalore to adopt micro um, solution is always a challenge but what i would say is what sir was saying medium and small cities it is possible i would say break the mega city into smaller parts and do it it's possible to do so um we engage waste picker we i, I identified waste picker the bangalore was the city was the first one to give identity card with the city uh, uh, you know signature of the commissioner and city logo and now of course in 2016 it became a law so today some of the uh, waste pickers i would say about 45 to 50 of them have actually you can go to the next slide it's just a pictures so actually have uh, become micro entrepreneurs and uh, they are all uh, you know 
filing the income tax return. Some of them this year we have uh, registered them as MSME. So how did this whole process took? I mean, uh, you can see the people who are with a bag and today with a uniform and the city has given this beautiful uh, vehicles for them to manage. Um, uh, and it is very, very important to identify that there is a skill, look at how the policy can be supportive of integration. So you have to have to work with the government. I mean, no uh, single organization can ever work on their own. And the government can't work on their own when you want to integrate. So it's a very strong, um, you know, um, uh, relationship that, that we have to build. And what we have seen is um, that if you go to the government with a proper strategy, with a proper uh, micro, I mean, evidence-based uh, solution, they accept. We had five commissioners, eight mayors, the policy has not changed. That is because the base on which you made this policy is very strong. The base uh, on which uh, the uh, entrepreneurial uh, skills were shown, the cost reduction is something that the government really like to see on a long run. And that's the only way we can sustain. However, I can't say we have been a, uh, extremely good at forming the uh, SAG groups. We are, in the, uh, we are still working on it. And what we really felt that in uh, many of the SAGs that we have studied, I don't know about Odisha, I've not studied it. The, uh, the challenge is that we are not able to give minimum wages. Today in Bangalore, anybody who works in solid waste management, uh, front-end workers, uh, the minimum wage is 17,000 rupees. It is, it is quite challenging to make that uh, minimum wage uh, uh, reach them. So as an SAG, uh, of course, uh, as an SAG, they're all owners of that uh, particular uh, micro enterprise. So uh, uh, minimum wages may or may not stand legally, but the thing is, it is very, very tough to uh, live in a city like Bangalore with less than that. So in that absence of that, what we are looking at is actually whatever the predictable income they get, and we access all the social security that is offered by the state, either because of their caste or their income or because of the kind of work they do. For example, in, in bank, in, uh, for the uh, waste pickers, there is a specific uh, uh, scholarship program for children of waste pickers, which is higher than most of the other um, uh, you know, caste-based or income-based uh, uh, scholarship. So how do we access that? And how do we make special mm -hmm. programs within the your local body uh, is very important. And uh, um, the group dynamics is a very key to work on. If you work on the group dynamics, you can uh, really achieve a lot. So some SAGs extremely work well and some don't. Why that, that happens? One has to be very critical about mm -hmm. looking at it uh, on that. And we should really also start looking at the cooperative models. And uh, there are uh, some cooperative models in, in for example, in uh, Pune, the cooperative has been extremely uh, effective. In that cooperative, there is one or two officers of the city who also sit on their board. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, cooperative uh, cost, admin cost is given by the corporation. The door-to-door -door collection, whatever money comes, goes directly to waste pickers. We all know in a system like uh, the present government, um, we don't get paid on time. In this particular model, what is happening, the uh, women who are working get uh, money immediately. The cooperative, which is only the administration, they get paid late. So that way you're not really um, looking at uh, getting, uh, having problems with uh, people's payment. In Bangalore, we do have pro problems for 10, uh, 10, year, 10 months, 12 months, 24 months, sometimes the payment doesn't happen. So we have to really come up with a cre little more creative way of looking at how we can involve private sector and the government and the citizens plus energy group as a model. So we have to evolve much bigger model than what we have today. And NULM, of course, it's a very good model, but challenge is the minimum wage. Uh, in some, uh, uh, some kind of uh, work, your minimum wage can be covered. But many of the tasks that at the micro level we do, we are unable to uh, meet that uh, uh, minimum wage. So the, today, uh, a city like Bangalore has given 
complete dry waste management to the waste picker it is unheard of in a mega city something like that is happening so this just happened a month ago and we are all working towards it the initial uh, effort uh, of uh, in, introduced in 38 wards is definitely showing very positive segregation has increased amount of waste that is going to the landfill has come down amount of um, uh, people that get uh, you know jobs especially post covid um is a, uh, we have seen it's it's really really good you can go to the next slide what we have to create in these models is the environment when now we just heard uh, odisha government where they say that the whole ecosystem is built ecosystem is built from the government from the policy and implementation so what we can actually do is to be our role as an ngo working in this field is to become a bridge for the waste pickers into different uh, stakeholders that we work with so unless all these ecosystem ngos come and go uh, but workers organization are always there so it is very important to recognize that and any ngo cannot be bigger than government so government should get involved in this and uh, we can only play a facilitative role a role that we bridge with everybody the skill development that is required one can do today msne uh, registration is not happened overnight it has taken about uh, you know 8 years for uh, uh, our uh, waste picker to start making msne there's lot of support hand holding that we re require in terms of uh, filing uh, different papers income tax returns is not so easy to file by themselves how do we create this ecosystem is extremely important and uh, we have about uh, 35000 waste pickers in our city and about 7500 are completely uh, given id cards i would say about 2 2500 people will be completely engaged in in this work that means the kind of work we have is also not enough for everybody to have their pie so we have to start looking at different kinds of work that they can do either within waste for example we have trained waste pickers to become compost they call themselves compost doctors if anybody is doing compost and they don't know how to fix it and they call themselves nobody told them they say okay i am a compost doctor i'll come and help you out so these are the skills and they we uh, provide event management services these event management services could be like 100 people in a home to we have even managed 35000 people 16000 people weddings where no waste goes to landfill so we work with the um, you know uh, with the with the host we work on how to minimize the waste how to segregate the waste in the wedding we don't believe in doing it behind the uh, you know uh, behind the wall we actually do um, we have a buffet table and we have a waste management table so all these places we have been able to engage and we can never forget that most of the waste pickers also come from dalit community so if they come from dalit community how do we make this integration possible for them to work with all of us uh, citizens um, to provide these services so we are trying to convert the people who are on the street working with waste uh, walking on the street to become service providers that is what we are trying to do so micro enterprise is a very very uh, good model to work if you want to scale in a big city very quickly anyway you want to do it very quickly it is possible so we can also get them minimum wages that is required all the um, uh, legal uh, uh, things that we have to follow can be followed even in a micro ma ma micro enterprise uh, model sgs are good micro enterprises are definitely um, good because management becomes extremely easy because uh, the micro enterprise person is responsible for implementation of it um, and and uh, in implementation of that so i would like to stop here is there another slide uh, you can just uh, so so the 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 biggest thing is how we move the informal workers just from free roaming to formalized right now we are not looking at formalized it takes lot of time making them professional is very important as a uh, free roaming waste picker i get up i go i do my work whenever i want and and, and then i'm fine with it but when you become a professional and a service provider there is a discipline that is required uh, to make that happen so it is important that uh, we train them for those kind of soft skills which is often forgotten by many people and soft skill cannot be learned on um, on the job 
soft skill cannot be done in this in the classroom setting it has to be a partnering you have to show what is soft skill for them to follow so those are the kind of things that we really need investment in making them professional and finally hopefully formalized uh, uh, workers we cannot expect formalized workers for all the 35000 that we have we are hoping that at least uh, part of them become formalized workers which have happened and uh, create them as micro entrepreneurs professionals groups now we also have started doing the groups so it is important that people like us stand in the background to support and create the ecosystem once you create the ecosystem they are on their own because it's uh, it's possible so i would only caution about minimum wage uh, challenges that we have in a sg group so uh, working with the wages with the uh, you know the schemes that are available to access the scheme that are available is closest to the living wages we believe in so it is important to do that so i will stop here and later on when we have questions i'll take the questions thank you uh thank you ms nalini um um we are actually just wanted to kind of uh, i mean it was very exciting to know and of course there's a different model you've applied but uh, we also have a running short of time so i'm just doing a quick uh, time check uh, on uh, for other uh, presenters also um uh, coming up we have rajmohan who uh, uh, and rajmohan i would request you to quickly uh, you know i mean be very Uh, precise in your presentation, and if you could just take us through it, I'll just put your slides up, and after that we have a short video, and then we'll move to the panel discussion. Um, uh, uh, so I'll just quickly um, put the presentation up for you. राजमोहन वर्किंग विद कैन एवरी वन एल्स म्यूट दम से so i have been carrying a social development experience and working with the sgs for a quite some time and i have seen their growth journey growth journey i could say so when the group formation was started the women were able to save you know 30 rupees per month and today it is the 100 to 200 rupees per month they are able to save then they you know borrowings from the groups the women were in those days the women were able to borrow 500 rupees to 1000 rupees now the women are able to borrow 50000 rupees as an individual member so that is the growth journey you no know, i wanted to share and today here i am going to share a few examples of my own implementation experience working with the sgs and how you know we can potentially take forward so we could see in the slide number this is a slide number 1 and 2 or oh no we speak about the operation maintenance of public and community toilets by the central groups okay this is uh, you know varangal you could see you could see varangal is the first one who tried to you know implement this model of you know maintenance of public toilets and community toilets by self help groups instead of engaging one or two women you no know, uh, in the city so we have taken up this group approach so that you know the group can maintain the maintain the toilet very well suppose say if one person is not there the group can take up the you know that job so that there will not be any issue of any maintenance or a availability of the caretaker is not an an issue for the people or the for the elb then uh, you know we tried we tried this model in warangal city now it has worked out well now we have scaled up to the entire entire state of telangana we have already around 50 such contracts issued and you uh, know the amount for amount is fixed for seat so here before fixing the you know amount for the seat we had a discussions uh, with the several uh, several state governments like you uh, know we had a discussion with the orissa government orissa people where they are paying 1500 rupees for seat 
so here we have negotiated we suggested the government of telangana for an 2500 rupees per seat per month so it is being accepted and it is implemented so here we are paying to a self help group uh, 2500 rupees per seat towards operation maintenance of the public toilets excluding the cost of the uh, sanitation material okay the third slide ma'am third one next slide next slide ma'am yeah yeah this is a another uh, model we tried with the transgender community here so uh, we worked with them this community a lot and uh, they feel that you know they are discriminated and many times they are harassed so we wanted to see that you know this transgender community should not be harassed and they should be you know there should be mainstreamed in the you know, mainstream of the social life so with that good intentions we started we also uh, ulb also entered an agreement giving them a 3 to 4 public toilets for our operation maintenance so we are testing here if it is get uh, tested and we are successful we wanted to scale it up for the entire state here so the guidelines the guidelines are very clearly say that you no know, we must encourage the self help groups and different abled groups Uh, for operation maintenance of the public toilets and the second one here in this line we have tested with the self help groups is you know for construction of a public toilets by the self help groups so we tried here the huge challenges that we encountered here is the the ability of the self help group or the women in construction of the toilet is in one challenge the second one is getting a finance under nulm is also in a you know another challenge that we are facing here so the uh, what we trying to say is the convergence is not that much easy convergence for getting a finance necessary financial support from the nulm is not in a uh, that much easy task it is in a very you know a gigantic one but whereas you know uh, engaging the women as an employer in the public toilet like a caretaker is not any problem but working with a full group is an you know a different issue for us okay that is the thing next slide ma'am fourth slide next slide yeah so the, the second aspect is the disledging you know business here so this picture you no know, she is from narsapur is in a, you know representing the narsapur municipality of the state of andhra pradesh where my one of my senior colleague is closely working with her so here we want to highlight is we have not helped her in becoming an entrepreneur but she is an entrepreneur by herself but what we have done is we have studied her model and uh, she we noticed that she struggled a lot for in uh, getting in a loan particularly for refurbishment so the second one next slide man yeah uh, this uh, she is ravani but she belongs to warangal so here this uh, we encouraged her the what is one thing second one we notice her, her husband is in the same business through our interactions with her we encouraged and now you can see she is in action so but now she is trying for in a second second vehicle she wanted to buy she was trying for in a loan and the good thing is the warangal municipal corporation is going towards in a scheduled disledging so city wants to make any provision in the tenders for prioritizing women disledging operators where women have an advantage so in both the cases these two women are representing the self help groups contracts are issued to an individuals not to in a group so the work is executed at individual capacity so whether the self help group can be involved in a trucking operations is the model that we have and tested but we will test that okay and next slide ma'am so uh, this is in a you know uh, uh, women leaders so this uh, this type of women we have in a huge number these people are involved in a sanitation awareness generation across this state next slide ma'am next slide yeah this is the last one, last bit and the sanitary pads making and also you know mask so we have an in warangal city take for example warangal we have a 13000 self help groups whereas in a state we have in a more than 75000 self help groups across the state the city is engaging this uh, sgs 
in making in stitching of in a mask and sanitary parts but what we don't see is the consistency consistency is in a huge challenge now the, during covid time no uh, government municipal corporation asked the self help groups to stitch for 300 masks but later on there is no consistency business was stopped there so here what we want to highlight is the groups as a group they do well but the lacking is the consistency so thank you very much thank you um thank you rajmohan ji um uh, for the uh, presentation and taking us uh, through the various uh, models and the stories uh, i'll just quickly uh, move to a very short video which is 3 minute video and from there we'll just move to the panel discussion um this is um story of um um shalini who um, i mean and umc and megna been uh, were able to share the story we wanted to get her live uh, into this uh, forum but we couldn't so i'll just uh, uh, just uh, play a video which came to us uh, from shalini and uh, My name is Shalini. I'm a 34-year-old transgender working as a caretaker of a community toilet at Deen Dayal Nagar in Warangal, Telangana. I have been through a difficult childhood, trying to understand myself and where I belong. Over time, I was able to accept myself and my identity, and identified myself as a girl. At 14, I changed my name from Krishna to Shalini. It wasn't easy. I faced tremendous reluctance and opposition from my family and even society. I ran away from home only to return 2 years later but was not accepted by my parents as they feared my sisters will never get married given my new identity as a transgender person. During this phase I met people from the transgender community in Warangal who took me in with no financial support at all I took to begging on the streets. traffic stops in trains and even outside shops to make ends meet today under the DAY NULM and SBM convergence program the urban management center team in collaboration with greater warangal municipal corporation and mepma started forming self help groups of persons working in vulnerable occupations through this initiative i enrolled as a member of the SRG This gave me an opportunity to get access to earning a dignified livelihood through a contract for ONM of community toilets. I nominated myself as a caretaker for managing the facility and began earning a monthly income of rupees 16000. My role was to be stationed at the community toilet from early morning to late evening, ensuring that the toilet block was kept clean and used by the local community. However, I began to notice that no one was using these toilets and I decided to approach the people and interact with them. I started going door to door in the community to identify houses that did not have individual household toilets. I have begun a system of maintaining a chart and register at the toilet block with details of the local community members visiting the toilet block. I try to spread awareness amongst the community members to use the community toilets and the ill effects of defecating in the open. I am very happy doing this work. Now the community members even praise me and appreciate my efforts for keeping the toilets clean. Things have changed now. I have been accepted in the community and even my family is happy to see me having a dignified and regular work. We the transgender community is now being recognized as part of society and being offered jobs and opportunities to start micro enterprises by GWMC. The other two initiatives for improving our livelihoods are maintenance of a garden or a nursery and even running a cafe. I am very grateful who believed in us, who gave confidence to me and provided us with dignified livelihood opportunities. We are looking forward for more such ventures. and with this uh, we'll quickly move to the panel and i know sakshi has a big task of really looking at time and fitting this <laughs> exciting panel into uh, you know with the time limitation without wasting much time i'll just uh, want to invite sakshi 
Uh, Sakshi works with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, a senior program officer and manages the foundation's water sanitation and hygiene program in India. She has a diverse set of experience that spans across private, public, and not-for-profit sector work. She's been a development professional for close to seven years with a specific focus on policy and program design, institutional strengthening, and strategic communication. I would like to welcome Sakshi and request her to kindly uh, introduce the panel uh, and take the discussion forward. Thank you, Arunati. Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, a lot of great conversations uh, happened before us and kind of hopefully sets some good context for this panel as well. Uh, I know we're short on time, so I quickly want to introduce my uh, panelists. Um, Malini, and I'm hoping your video uh, is on now. Malini is a, a professor at the Administrative Staff College of India. Uh, she is a multidisciplinary researcher and a practitioner uh, in the area of urban governance and service delivery. She has more than 22 years of professional experience working with academic institutions, business organizations, uh, and many national, state, and local governments, in, plus the nonprofit uh, sector. Uh, Meghna uh, is the deputy director uh, at the Urban Management Center. She's been working in the fields of urban governance and urban management across sectors, uh, has a lot of focus on community engagement, urban health, performance measurement, urban water and sanitation, and uh, has kind of been spearheading the convergence program uh, at the National Urban Livelihoods Mission, uh, along with the Swachh Bharat Mission. She's managed city partnerships with the UMC ICMA as well. Uh, Tom, who's a senior program manager uh, for sanitation at the Water for People, uh, he has supported over 60 sanitation initiatives across uh, nine country programs and leads the organizational sanitation strategy and research agenda. Uh, he has uh, 19 years of global experience in the sector uh, with expertise in sanitation market system development, uh, business models for wash, uh, and a lot of social and political context, and a little bit of what we'll hear from him today. Uh, Abhishek, uh, who is the associate vice president uh, within Telecap, has uh, over 11 years of experience. Combined experience includes consulting, financial research, agribusiness experience. Uh, his core expertise is around developing interventions for improving access to finance for MSMEs, uh, which is hopefully quite relevant for what we're going to talk about, and even early stage enterprises uh, with low income communities and women collectives. So with that, maybe I'll just quickly jump into uh, some of the questions for my panelists. Uh, just a reminder for anyone who has questions in the audience, please keep putting them uh, in the chat. Malini, uh, I want to start with you, especially uh, to follow up with Raj Mohan's uh, presentation. Uh, you know, could you speak a little bit about what's the exact model, uh, which is the community-led livelihood model that uh, you've been uh, piloting with? And talk to us a little bit about the success and challenges that you see uh, to take these models to scale. Uh, and I know uh, Matisa Nalini uh, also highlighted a few of those challenges, but uh, let's take your uh, your perspective on that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Am I audible? Okay. Uh, so uh, just building on the uh, fantastic presentations that we have seen uh, so far, uh, you know, I think it's, it's uh, our experience has been that if we want to drive this uh, initiative of bringing SHGs, uh, in, mainstreaming them into sanitation, then they need the support of a very strong institutional structure. One anchored organization which will look into this activity and run with it uh, consistently. So uh, in the states of Andhra and Telangana, Fortunately, there is an organization called uh, MECMA, which is a uh, mission for elimination of poverty in municipal areas. Uh, this was also mentioned in the video uh, that Meghna had showed earlier. Now, this is a confederation of uh, uh, women's self-help groups. So in the state of Telangana, there are about 1.5 lakh 
or so self-help group only in urban areas under MEPMA, registered under MEPMA. And in uh, uh, Andhra, this would be about 2.3 lakh self-help groups. So just to take an example of Telangana, uh, the, the objective of this organization is to promote on, uh, empowerment. And the channel that they use is livelihoods. So this is something which uh, can really anchor sanitation-related activities. So they're involved in variety of activities from tailoring to uh, various other um, sectors, but they haven't really looked at sanitation very closely. So our model, Sakshi, for uh, scaling up uh, SFG uh, mainstreaming into sanitation is to work with this institutional structure, which has been there for many years, and to take it forward. Uh, I agree with uh, Raj Mohan that in our experience, one of the biggest challenge has been uh, a consistency of activity. So uh, there is absolutely no dearth of political will or administrative support when it comes to uh, initiatives related to uh, gender integration. Absolutely, there is a complete buy-in. However, um, the, uh, the challenge comes in terms of identifying market opportunities. So where is the market assessment being done? Where are the jobs where we can take up mass scale training capacity building? Where are those jobs or uh, opportunities where funding linkages can be initiated uh, beforehand itself so that tie-ups are made? Um, how do I ensure that the remuneration that is provided to self-help groups uh, uh, takes care of the opportunity cost uh, of the individuals who are engaging in these activities? Um, it is through institutions like this that we need to drive the policies and procurement initiatives to give that uh, uh, additional, um, uh, what to say, uh, you know, leverage in the eligibility criteria so that SAG groups can be encouraged to apply. Having said it, uh, I completely agree, uh, and I'd like to just extend on what Raj Mohan said. Just to give you an example, uh, we have hit, our model is to test a few things, learn from it, and then take it to the scale for uh, to the state for scale up. So, uh, if you look at market opportunities, where are the market opportunities in sanitation? So, if you quickly span and stick to only say Telangana, uh, in the recent past, the government has taken a stand that it will construct uh, one public toilet seat for every thousand population, floating population. And uh, as of now, there are about 11,000 public toilets in uh, Telangana. So we identified that that was a great opportunity for operation and maintenance related activity. And Rajmohan has said that about, uh, you know, we learned from models of Orissa and other places. We discussed uh, and uh, figured out that 1500 was not workable in terms of remuneration <laughs> in these two states. So 2500 was negotiated with the state and that has been identified. Now, having said it, there are a lot of issues like Narini has brought out. We cannot really consider an SHG group to be a very cohesive group. Ultimately, the group comprises individuals, and there are a lot of group dynamics which need to be looked at. So there are a lot of questions that who is going to get the order? Is the SHG group going to get the order, or somebody, some individual in the group is going to get the order? If there are 10 members in the group, who will actually get to, how do we divide the amount amongst ourselves? So which means that in addition to government directives, government taking some, uh, giving advantage to SRG groups in the procurement processes, a lot of effort has to go in these building this business management skills, ability to conduct market assessment so that they understand that there is a lot of scope. So 11,000 11, public toilets, and you can say about minimum of three seats then there are 140 towns and they have a minimum of two D sludgers, which are all privatized right now. Uh, so you can say about 300 D sludging trucks are there. There is opportunity for women to get it. If the towns go into scheduled D sludging, then that means the opportunity line there is 1500 D sludging trucks with three members at least on each of the trucks. Then there are 139 towns which are going for FSTPs in Telangana. 
So there is opportunities for women to work in labs. There's opportunity for women to work as plant managers. In addition to day-to-day -day operation and maintenance, uh, there is opportunity in toilet retrofitting. Telangana is one of the first states probably which has just completing about conversion of 18,000 in sanitary toilets into sanitary toilets. So there's tremendous opportunity in plumbing. There's tremendous opportunity in masonry and toilet building. But the point that I'm trying to say is that it's important for us to also pitch uh, employment and entrepreneurship at a slightly higher technical level as well. We need not always look at just maintenance related activities. They can be pushed. There are many educated women uh, within the SHG groups and they can definitely be uh, taken forward. Um, while the political will is there, uh, unless there are guidelines and a very forceful implementation and monitoring from the state level, which is questioning them that how many groups have you actually engaged? Things will not change. Otherwise, it will just remain as anecdotal evidences or one great example. Uh, there are also a lot of unintended consequences of the very well-meaning initiatives that all of us members in this group intend to take. For example, as Rajmohan rightly mentioned, there are toilets given to transgender community members for operation and maintenance. Uh, you know, earlier, why is it that transgender members could not, uh, were not uh, accepted to as users in public toilets? Supreme Court says they can use any side, but it is you and me who do not allow them to come. We have our biases. The same thing can translate to them maintaining the public toilet also. What gives me the assurance right now that these transgender group members for whom we have fought and bought the maintenance or contract will not face harassment by the users. So I think these are some of the things that we are very concerned before we start thinking in terms of scale, because getting the directive might be easy, but are we really uh, benefiting the people whom it is intended to benefit? These are some concerns, and therefore, I think when we are talking of scale, uh, one needs to uh, keep these things in uh, mind and then proceed. But opportunities are gallowed, and we must pitch them at a higher level than just operation and maintenance is the point, uh, is the thinking that we have in these two states. Great. Uh, Malay, that's quite insightful. Uh, you have a problem of what are the additional skilling and capacities that we, one needs to build in these um, collectives so that they can perform at a, at least at par at a, like a private sector, that the ecosystem needs to be done. But there's also the problem of agency where they face harassment, they face uh, inconsistency in terms of market activities as well, which is another category which has to be Look through. And there's a huge role of the government here, which really needs to come top down. Uh, and great on the institutional structures uh, part, because that gives me a good segue to talk to uh, Meghna about uh, her work with the, the National Urban Livelihoods Mission, which is kind of the platform for scale, Meghna. Uh, and I know that all the concerns that uh, that Madani has shared, those some of those are try, kind of at least in intent being addressed by NULM. Uh, maybe there are some questions on implementation, et cetera. So give me a view there on what's that NULM is able to provide, but also what's the incentive for cities to, be, to employ these groups? Why should a city prefer an SHG group versus a private player beyond just the goodness of their heart, right? So you know, talk to me a little bit about that, Meghna. Sure. Uh, am I audible, Sakshi? Yeah. So, um, I mean, we, we've been working very closely with the National Urban Livelihoods Mission. And as Mali said, the intent is there. Uh, both NULM and Swachh Bharat Mission did bring out this very this set of convergence guidelines from the ministry that actually served as an advisory for cities to take up of how can SGs be engaged across various sanitation value chains, be it solid waste, be it actual the, the sanitation value chains across cities, across states. 
uh, the, there was the Swachhita Excellence Awards that which were instituted. The Swachhita Sarvekshan now has specific components which award cities, right? So th all of these are incentives for cities to take this up seriously. Uh, but again, we see this implementation where you have state and city championship very clearly. We heard Mati sir in the um, in the earlier part of this session, and and as um, I mean. That's a state that has really been championing, engaging SSGs across various sectors, not only WASH. And this, and like, and in, and to just quote his own words, he's saying that SSGs are are, are their partners for implementation, right? Uh, but also, if you see from the urban local bodies perspective of 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 what is not working or what is working for them, um, so one is um, I think to. Um, also what Malini did, did uh, talk about this, that how do you really work with SSGs to help them select WASH as a livelihood option first, right? Do you have the whole ecosystem uh, ready to work with SSGs? I mean, we have so many organizations I and mean, wherever you have these supporting organizations, there it will work. We heard Nalini G's work in Bangalore, ASCII's work in, in cities of AP and Telangana, but where you don't have these supporting organizations, the NULN structure needs to be sensitive enough to, to work with SSGs uh, to help them take WASH as a livelihood option. And when I'm saying as a livelihood option also, help them look at the entire business planning. How do you access your credit support? How do you actually go to banks with a business plan, get credit, all of that. So that, that entire structure is really something that is kind of uh, needs to be strengthened. Second is, and even to work with ULBs, um, to engage uh, SSGs at scale. Um, uh, I mean, we, we do see uh, a lot of such cases where uh, Sakshi, as you said, that uh, many ULBs are, are giving work to SSGs as pilots. You know, you take one community toilet, go, Let, let's see whether this works. But not, that's, that's against rules of, you know, it just doesn't make economic sense. Um, how do you work with, I mean, how do you sensitize ULBs to ensure that you have to treat SSGs at par? Uh, make your procurement guidelines such that SSGs can compete with private sector. Um, you don't put in necessary turnover clauses. You don't need them for many of these WASH uh, contracts as well but treat them at par with private organizations that we have seen SSGs go beyond what that their mandate is. Um, since SSG members are from the communities or the surrounding areas, we see them also doing a lot of behavior change activities. For instance, in the community toilet examples that we've been seeing in Odisha, um, I mean, they've been nudging households to use, uh, use uh, these facilities where individual toilets are not there and ensuring that these settlements become ODF. Uh, and so, this is, this is clearly a work uh, that's happening, but when it comes to ULBs, and I'm uh, coming to even the points that were raised earlier, we need to ensure regular payments mm. to SNGs. That's a big problem for SNGs to really survive. Um, um, and that's a comparison again with the private sector. The private sector may be able to you know, absorb these uh, these yeah. large, these, these so many months of non-payments, but SNGs are not able to handle such cash flow deficit issues. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, these are the problems that we have to work with ULBs and also like clustering and bundling contracts. Why mm -hmm. are we seeing this only as on a very pilot to pilot basis? And why are we not uh, looking at, uh, uh, why are we not looking at clustering contracts or bundling contracts to give them a, the, you know, a bulk of our bulk of the work. Um, so that's uh, something. And, Wherever this has happened, if you discuss with ULB officials, um, they've seen a lot of um, good work coming through SSG's engagement across the WASH value sector. We have seen very good examples in solid waste. That's a very clearly established uh, model where there's a lot of also financial incentives in, in terms of the dry waste that you re recycle or uh, lesser in the sanitation value chain. Uh, and that's where the ULB really needs to put in uh, the money to service these contracts and pay SSGs at par with private sector, treat them at, uh, uh, you know, at, at par with the private sector. And also the whole skilling ecosystem, I think the whole training and the whole EDP support, um, 
the whole EDB support, I mean, whatever contracts we've seen SAGs enter into ULBs, uh, many of these contracts are so dissimilar even in our same city, right? How do SAGs negotiate these contracts? What are major repairs? What are minor repairs? You really need that kind of, you know, a, a single window system for, for SAGs, so to say. A single uh, a support system for SAGs to navigate these contracts and to really then be able to work uh, with the urban local bodies to deliver this to deliver those. Uh, a great example is what Dickey has been able to do with the Hyderabad Metropolitan Sewerage and Metro uh, Board. Uh, but Dickey has really given that single window, that, that support system to SAGs. And that's something that, that we really need to set up it, at an institutional level uh, to support SAGs to really scale up uh, their working with uh, ULBs. Thanks, Megna. Very yeah. useful uh, points. You know, I think for us, all the aim Although the aim for these enterprises is to be measured akin to a private sector entity, there is a long road to traverse. And this is where maybe I'll come to you, Abhishek. Uh, you know, uh, there's no way these delayed payment shocks can be absorbed by at least these kind of collectives. Nalini spoke about trying to convert them into MSMEs took them eight years. There's no way we have that much time, especially given where the country is in terms of livelihoods and employment. Right? So maybe talk to us a little bit about what are those, I guess, financial mechanisms that will enable, and I'm only talking about the financial mechanisms. I know that there's a lot more still to, to be done around the, the agency bit uh, and the stigma bit as well, which we'll have to deal with. But at least on the financial uh, bit, we know actually SSGs have the highest repayment rates uh, when it comes to uh, you know re returning on credit. Yet there is a challenge. I know NULM has been trying to push um, better credit to SSGs. Yet there is a challenge. What else does the ecosystem need to bring in uh, to make sure these enterprises are successful, at least in terms of remuneration, business viability, and financial? And what do you want the financial institutions to look at now? Over to you, Abhishek. Right. Thanks for that question, Shakshi. Uh, before we try to answer in terms of what needs to be done to enable access to financing, I think I'll uh, just spend a couple of minutes trying to take uh, a look at the problem from a financier's lens, right? So if a financier has to come in and provide a loan to these entities, uh, wherein uh, lies the challenge for them to be able to do this and why are they shy of pursuing this opportunity? Uh, if you notice, most of the financing that's happening in this space is uh, coming under part of government programs uh, at subvented rates or as part of grant funds, right? And uh, most of these are uh, restrictive uh, in terms of the ticket size. So as a group, uh, what you'll see in most common uh, uh, practice as loans of up to three to five lakh uh, at the max. Now, the reason why this is working and then you have SSG bank linkage program wherein uh, banks are open to providing a certain multiple of uh, uh, the savings amount that the group mobilizes is because uh, in these mechanisms, uh, there is a component of joint liability that comes into question, which is why uh, it works for the financiers in terms of the risk that they are undertaking and there are social dynamics uh, which ensures that there is some payment pressure, uh, which gives comfort to the financial institutions in providing those loans. But as soon as we start uh, looking at the uh, classic missing middle problem, when scale becomes an issue and therefore the larger quantum of uh, funds become an issue, there's absolutely no source of uh, money that's currently available to the collectives, right? So if you start talking about, uh, for instance, uh, in the FSSM space, uh, models like HAM, and we're talking about bundling projects, which Meghna was alluding to. Uh, this would push the ticket sizes to 60 lakhs or above, or maybe even one crore and above, depending on the number of projects that are getting bundled. Now, are FIs in a position to service these loans or cater to these uh, uh, the need, this kind of a demand? But there are some problems uh, that we'll have to understand and then try to work on the solution piece or uh, identify what could potentially work. Right, so uh, the first problem is a problem that uh, I think has been tacitly touched upon in a different context, uh, context but we also need to understand its ramifications uh, when it comes to a financier's ability to underwrite. And that's on the group identity side uh, that uh, we were alluding to or the group dynamics, right? 
uh, so who is actually taking the loan is there an entity that's taking a loan is there a group that's taking a loan or is there an individual that's taking a loan uh, who would i pursue my recovery action against uh, that becomes important now uh, a larger ticket size loan uh, the joint and individual liability that typically exist in a jlg setup or in an ssg loan will not work because that would be against the social ethic to even burden a low income uh, woman member with the task of uh, assuming the liability for a 20 lakh loan should the group not pay for it therefore that's challenge number 1 the challenge number 2 which is a bigger challenge for fis is if you go about talking to a large number of institutions they wouldn't even know or uh, data or information about these shg groups members or the kind of activities they are into or the nature of financing demand that exists so that's actually step number 1 that we need to work with and uh, we focus on the capacity building needs of the shgs i think there is an element of capacity building needs for the financial institutions also and there's very little data if you for go about uh, searching in public domain that actually tries to look at the landscape of the collectives in terms of the activities they are into or uh, the kind of financing needs the kind of revenue numbers profitability investment requirements etc for fis to be able to identify yes this is a segment we can pursue and then start ideating on developing a product that's customized for their needs and the third problem obviously uh, which is generic and not just specific to collectives is uh, uh, something that's rampant on the msme side as well uh, is around access to collateral now given these three problems uh, what is it that we need to do to enable financing uh and if we now start thinking in terms of solutions i think it's important uh, that we also learn from the examples uh, in the msme space so the focus so far has been uh, you know for the government uh, to ensure that there are mechanisms by which access to funds for msmes are enabled and therefore you see measures like mudra you see you see measure, measures like cgt msc now co lending is something that's coming up wherein or uh, you know you nbfc is originating the loan and part of the loan is being financed by banks and part of the loan is uh, on the nbfc's book to address the liquidity concerns uh can we draw from these lessons yes uh, there is there are two kinds of interventions that we need to keep in mind one is for the short term how do we enable access to financing in the near term here and now and then what do we need to do in order to ensure that uh, eventually in the medium to long run uh the private sector itself is attracted uh, to provide financing to them on a purely market based principle so in the context of a short term intervention i think uh, what's important is because you have so many concerns on the fi side on the credit quality aspect there has to be some form of a credit guarantee mechanism that comes into equation and so far i think it's only very recently that the government uh, sort of came out with uh, a notification under which uh, Uh, one of the schemes which is the credit guarantee fund uh, for micro units uh, has now the, uh, the 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 scope of this uh, guarantee fund has been expanded to cover shg loans also which is a welcome step but uh, as with any government interventions uh, and specifically government interventions that work with uh, banks uh, the trickle down effect takes a period of time so you know the actual fund flow happening to shgs under the ambit of this guarantee program could take anywhere between 3 to 5 years cgt msc we know uh, uh, it has been 5 or 6 years and for a largest period of time uh, the amount of loan outstanding was stuck between 1.5 lakh crore to 2 lakh crore so therefore uh, if we have to catalyze something in the near term and create success stories to inspire more women and more shg groups we need some private sector sort of uh, initiative to create and uh, work with the private sector nbfc in sort of a credit guarantee mechanism that look nbfc you originate these loans here's the opportunity here are the enterprises and there is a fund that will back you for a certain percentage of your loss losses we can discuss the mechanics whether that will be an fldg whether that will be a partial credit guarantee and so forth uh, what needs to be done in the medium to longer term i think all the solutions that we have been discussing on the capacity building side and uh, if you notice these are largely in four big brackets you know mm. there is a need for uh, human resource training uh, with all the group dynamic elements and the business management part of it uh, then there is an aspect around market linkage and marketing and branding that comes into question uh, maybe not so much in the case of uh, fssm players where there is predictability revenue visibility given the longer term nature of contracts with the ulbs Uh, but in terms of uh, the overall requirements if you notice there is a strong market linkage training uh, intervention that is needed 
finance and accounts, I think the, the, it just cannot be emphasized enough uh, on the need uh, to train SAG women members on maintaining data about their businesses so that uh, in the case when they need to approach FIs, they are able to provide those data points based on which FIs can underwrite. And also understanding how financing works. And finally, the fourth critical intervention would be around IT support system, you know, digital. How do they, uh, how do you make them computer savvy to be able to uh, work in today's time across uh, these initiatives? So once you have success cases based on these initiatives, I think uh, you'll see eventually the private sector investment coming in and uh, a lot of this government grant based uh, mechanics getting sorted out. That's uh, very thoughtful, uh, Abhishek, uh, especially the conversation around the, can you think about some credit guarantee funds, uh, which are not necessarily uh, driven through just the government, but also, you know, maybe from the development sector coming in or the private sector coming in to promote this. And a very nice layout of those four categories. And I want to pick up on the second one, then come to you, Tom. Uh, We've spoken about the government part of it, the agency part of it, uh, what the communities need, and also the perception from the financial institutions. But how do we do the market linkages bit uh, as well? And with your work, uh, uh, which spans across countries beyond India as well, tell us a little bit more about, from your experience, how do we close those market opportunity gaps how do we incentivize uh, enough engagement of these enterprises uh, in those cities uh, as well? Yeah, sure. I mean, <clears throat> we firmly believe that we will not solve the sanitation crisis without involving the private sector and market actors. We just think it's too big of a challenge. And I think the big challenge that we've come across is how do you not just work on this very small micro scale of going enterprise to enterprise, which is going to take hundreds of years to actually scale? So what we've really been trying to do is balance that sort of targeted individual enterprise support with, with operating with kind of larger federations and associations. So I think what's really driven our success in sanitation in building market space systems in India has been working with multiple uh, cluster level federations of SS, SHGs. So in our work areas, um, there's been over 150 san sanitation enterprises spawned, uh, generating over 6 million US dollars of household investment. But we only worked with about 30% of those actually. The, the rest were sort of supported by the larger uh, cluster level federations and sort of crowded in. Um, similarly, looking at kind of fecal sludge management services, we do quite a bit of work in um, Malawi and Uganda around this. But again, it's been years and years of working with these small micro enterprises that can't negotiate a service contract on their own. They still can't get a loan, et cetera. So a lot of the focus has been on forming them into pit emptying associations. So they negotiate on, on behalf of their members for a service contract with the municipality or to negotiate a bank loan, or they can actually buy equipment and then hire it out on a daily basis or lease it, et cetera. Um, and I think a big challenge is <laughs> sanitation is a low margin business in our experience. And it's, you need to get to a certain sort of volume, let's say, uh, to hit your maximum level of efficiency. So again, it's um, drawing on what others have said. How do you sort of, um, bundle together business opportunities or have larger level associations sort of um, um, help to draw together members so that they can operate at that efficiency and also do things like demand generation and demand aggregation, which we sort of find is not in the core expertise of a lot of kind of small micro enterprises and self-help help groups. And there's a lot of cost and time that gets spent on those kind of things. So how do you help them kind of aggregate demand so that they can focus really more on the business side? Um, we, we, we do kind of find that the smaller self, self help groups and smaller enterprises that have other business experience, uh, sort of experience in micro lending, it's a really good proxy indicator. So we're really trying to kind of seek those out and, and really scale them 
uh, quickly. And it's all about really, I think, <laughs> we're trying to get better at drilling down on the key business metrics to, to really track success um, and to really make the business case to, I think both the public sector, um, that this is a smart investment. We know you've got very scarce public resources. How do you make your money work harder, right? I, I think that that's a really key thing, but to show the private sector that there is a, uh, uh, money to be made here. And I, I think in India, you know, that's been shown at, at scale when you look at the massive investment. But Swatch Bharat was so critical in that with all the public sector investment that went in, the private sector saw there is going to be money for this. You know, people will have money to spend. There is an opportunity here. Um, and that's really what we're trying to replicate in other countries, because we do think that that government policy and regulation will drive markets. That's, uh, that's great, Tom. Um, and actually your point on uh, the experience with creating these associations and also thinking about how they can negotiate better than smaller uh, select SRG groups or individuals who may have a lower agency. It's kind of a way we, which maybe we could explore in India uh, as well uh, and see what are the pros and cons there. Uh, but uh, I know that we're kind of running out of time. So we're going to do a quick blitz uh, with the four of you. I'm going to start with you, Tom. But, uh, you know, just give me one thing that uh, you would want uh, for this market opportunity piece to be streamlined that either the government uh, needs to do or uh, other stakeholders, including the financial institutions, may need to do to enable this. What's that one thing that would be the biggest lever in your case? Access to capital is such a huge issue for these enterprises. And um, while these enterprises provide huge social returns, the financial returns, if you don't have the big volume, it's not huge. So something has to give. <laughs> Yeah. I think in terms of access to capital. Yeah. Meghna, next, uh, you are next on my radar, but access to capital, and I know NULM is trying to do that a lot through the, again, through what Abhishek said, some subvention mechanisms, but what else? Tell me what that one thing I think is. the whole, I think, and I'm going to build on what Abhishek said, the whole credit guarantee support and the and the uh, benefit that the government, and PIM Swanidhi, this is another scheme that the government really launched, but there was a huge lender comfort that the ministry gave to lenders, right? Similarly, if we can demonstrate the same thing for uh, wash sector, for SAGs to start doing that, um, I think that'll be, that'll be big. And we should try, we should start with a few pilots in different such things at different scales. I'm not too sure about the mm -hmm. scale that Abhishek was talking about, 60, 70 lakh bit, but uh, we can start somewhere and we have to start uh, at smaller scales, maybe. Great. Malini, uh, to you, tell me how do we try and solve for the heterogeneity and the different of, difference of context? At least give us a few standardized. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? You're on mute. Yeah. Tell me a bit about uh, there's heterogeneity, there is inconsistency. So, what beyond this credit, which we heard from um, uh, Meghna and Tom as well now. What can we do to solve that part of the problem? What's sure, that one so thing I you would recommend? I think that uh, beyond uh, the financing part, because I'd also like to say that MECMA sits on a corpus of 500 crores. So, uh, and it also gives a loan subsidy of 30% to uh, micro enterprises. So somewhere when all organizations put their collective hat, I'm sure the financing can or part can come through. But I think uh, from our experience, uh, and it's also uh, reasonably easy to get guidelines and procurement processes streamlined from the state level and enforced. I think that is also uh, an easy thing. What really needs to be worked on is uh, confirmed market returns. The SRG group need to see money if they see money, they will put in their own private capital and come in. I, my concern is right now they don't see money. If they put 12 lakhs on an FSTP desludging, uh, FSM desludging truck, 
do they have confirmed returns? They don't. If the moment they get confirmed returns, they will jump in and I don't think they will look for uh, uh, huge capital elsewhere. They will generate that money among themselves. That's great. Abhishek, over to you. Tell me that one myth that this ecosystem needs to bust uh, for the financial institutions to lend. That it's non-lendable. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> uh, to put it in a nutshell, yes, but I think, uh, again, I'll go back to the same thing, right? Uh, we've talked about financing, we've talked about subvention, we've talked about credit guarantee. I think we shouldn't start with something which is radical. Uh, you take what has worked in some other segment and you tweak it to the context in which you're applying. And in that context, I'll go back to my examples. Uh, credit guarantee as something which has worked in the SME sector needs to be retweaked. There were enough problems in CGTMSE when it came out and gradually it was refined better so as to allay FI concerns. We should learn from those uh, measures and customize the guarantee fund that's required for this segment. The okay. second initiative, capacity building. Tell Again, me one, sorry, one liner. <laughs> yes, just one what? liner. I think yeah. we should learn from the acceleration program for startups in general. You know, the way we enable them to access finance by providing them capacity building support through a startup-led high-touch, low-touch model over a period of time, we should try that again in the SFG context and see how that enables them to gradually move ahead. Okay, great. Uh, I, although we're out of time, I'm not ending this conversation because uh, a lot of what you all have said actually needs to translate now into the how and the operations of it, because we've not fixed the problem with this one panel conversation. Uh, so Abhishek, Tom, I'll come back to you on the association and the credit guarantee fund. Uh, and Meghna Malini, of course, uh, you're a constant partner in trying to fix this issue around agency market uh, consistency as well. Uh, so with that, thank you so much. Uh, and we'll close the panel. Back to you, Arun Dati. Thank you, Sakshi, and thank you all the panelists. Uh, this was very interesting. Uh, I know we overran time and uh, we also had a lot of other showcases to do and I'm so apologies for that. Uh, thank you for taking out time. Um, uh, what I would also request is um, uh, our, our audience have been really patiently listening to all of this and uh, thanks all of you to, uh, you know, for taking out time and attending the session. I would request there's a parallel session now which has started on FSSM financing to join that and there are more sessions on um, health uh, which is happening uh, throughout the day. So please feel free to go back on Drella and join those sessions. Uh, also feel free to connect with the speakers uh, beyond this uh, session and go on Drella and connect with them. Thank you so much. Have a great day.